All right, everybody, welcome back to Fixed-ish. Today, we're gonna show you some general terms and general theory of how uh, distributor type ignition works. Um, disclaimer here, I have an example igniter pickup and the igniter pickup in this one, they're both bad. So I can't show you for real how it uh, sparks, but I will be simulating that once I get through the theory, you'll understand why. So I'll be simulating that by making and breaking ground on this, which is the same thing as what this does. So let's introduce some terms here. This right here is a uh, coil resistor, external. And it looks like this on a coil setup. So we've got a coil, external resistor. That's one style. So external resistor, coil. Now this one's slightly different. You'll notice it's not mounted, not one is mounted here. And that is because this is an internally resisted coil. So there's no, re no reason to have this. Uh, that is generally an older design to have an externally resisted coil. Most stuff is all internally resisted anymore. This is how they're set up when they're together. They'll look something similar. You've got your distributor. This is your vacuum advance rotor. This is your pickup. In this case, this is just a uh, pickup igniter in one. You can see here, pickup igniter in one. You will see on some designs they have a pickup. And then below, they'll have an igniter mounted, not on this style. So again, distributor, rotor, igniter, vacuum advance, distributor. All right, so let's take a look at some theory and how this actually works. For this example, here is my car battery, 12 volt. So that's what this is designed to work on. Got my distributor set up here. This is kind of crudely wired. This is ground. I have this grounded because in a vehicle it is inside the engine. Engine's grounded, so I have it grounded here to bring it into the circuit. So this is also bolted to the block. We need to introduce it into the circuit as well. So I will ground it as well. So this is now grounded. We can prove this by taking our meter and going to ohms and continuity test. So we'll get a ring when they have continuity. So we'll check from our battery to our case, to our case. Okay, those will have continuity. Okay, so we have continuity. We are grounded. Car battery, coil distributor, they are all grounded. Now we need to introduce our power. So here's our power wire. And I have my jumper. Here we go. So we're going to take power from our battery. We are going to <clears throat> have it brought into our coil. And I will explain how the um, resistor works. But for now, we have power coming in. Power here. Power also on the same, they're wide together here. And this goes all the way up to the pickup on our distributor. So now our distributor is power up to here on the pickup. Let's verify that that's what we have. We'll take a silver to voltage. And because we brought in, we'll see that we have, okay, there's our 12 volt. Oops, let me take my auto ranging out. Okay, so here's our 12 volts. Now we will check our voltage. You can go from battery to right here where they're wide together. You can see we're 12 volts. You can go all the way up here on the distributor. Okay, we'll verify on this wire for a moment that we are 12 volts. Yep, 12 volts. Okay. 
So we are 12 volts up here. You can also check this out. We'll do the trigger wire. I'll show you on the trigger wire that we don't have anything yet. And that is because we have not hooked up our trigger wire yet. Our trigger wire goes on the other side of this coil. So down here you've got your you've got your positive and you've got your negative. They're both 12 volts as of right now. Let me verify and show you this. So this is on the coil side. So let me get this probed into something. See, we've got 12 volts here. So when I plug this in, we now have 12 volts up here as well. This is what's going into the coil side of our pickup. So we now have 12 volts on both sides. 12 volts on both sides of this pickup. Well, that may not make sense to you, but what you're trying to do is only introduce a ground to discharge the coil. So when you're coming across, you need to make and break a ground very, very quickly. And the way it does this is on the pickup. I'll show you via this pickup. So we're 12 volts on battery, 12 volts on coil, and this is our ground. So when we come across, oops, here's our pickup, here's our battery, here's our coil, and as we have a piece of metal that's grounded, which is the distributor, come across and ground across here, it will connect the coil to ground part of the circuit. And when it makes and breaks it very quickly, it'll discharge via the coil. So that's what each one of these lobes does. We've got four lobes inside there. And when this comes across and makes that ground to discharge that coil because it's charged up, it'll discharge this way. You have it make ground here, it'll discharge that direction. Here that direction, here that direction. To visualize this, I think you've all seen a distributor before. Here's where your coil wire comes up and in. So from your coil in here, and then depending on where this electrode is pointing, in this case, the, the uh, coil will discharge into the top of the distributor through the rotor, make contact on one of the little posts inside there, in this case, it's pointing this direction, so it's going to discharge out this wire hole and go to that spark plug. When that spins and makes contact here, it will then spark again in here, discharge through there to that spark plug until you do all four. All through that pickup, you're making and breaking all the time. So let's make sure we're hooked up. We've got battery ground, we are grounded, oops, grounded right there, we verified that earlier, we've got our power in, power in, power in, power all the way up to our battery constant side, we've got our coil trigger side also hooked up, coil trigger. Now, like I said earlier, now this would send, this is going to be our, my simulated coil wire. Now what it would do, I don't have a set of wires just hanging out. This would connect to the top of here, shoot the spark down the middle, go into here, go to your spark plug. And the spark plug is in the engine, which it is grounded because it's bolted into the engine. So we can uh, eliminate all that so we can visually see this process happening by just bringing this near ground or creating our own spark gap. And you can see I can touch it all I want. Nothing's going to happen. Okay. Our circuit is set up. Now, if this was had a working igniter in it, I could sit here and spin this and this thing would go pop, 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 and just 
spark constantly. But that's, uh, that is not working, and neither is the other one. But remember, we said that if we just make and break this to ground over and over and over again, that we can basically simulate the exact same thing. So what we can do here is simulate that exact same thing. I know you can kind of see up here, it makes a spark here because I'm making a breaking. But that snapping is actually over here. Let me turn some lights off. Maybe you guys can see this. So, same thing, no trickery. I'm sitting here. Oops. Yes, it's happening there. Let's bring this in the foreground a little bit better. Now, let's show you this thing sparking. Can't see it? Let's get closer. That's what's happening in your engine every time that rotor spins around and touches, it doesn't touch, but comes in contact, comes in close proximity to that igniter. So, like I said, this is our crude, very crude setup. Very, very crude setup of our car battery, engine block slash coil grounded, distributor slash coil grounded, Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to this episode of Fixed Dish. I uh, just wanted to go over some uh, distributor ignition. Uh, this is kind of a crude setup. There's many, many, many different types of setups. Uh, this doesn't even include anything that has phase ignition, some type of crank trigger, anything like that. This is basically just a distributor on cam. If the timing assembly is spinning, so is the distributor. So this is really a step back into the past showing you Originally how it was done was just distributor ignition. They use this forever. There's still a lot of this stuff out there. But uh, if you guys want to touch on anything a lot newer, anything that has um, phase or uh, coil on plug, uh, anything that dives into that type of ignition, I can do a separate video. If you want something that's more involved and shows the distributor ignition, I am keeping these parts just for example so I can make some learning materials. So yeah, when you bench test one of these, or when you test it when it's on the truck, you will uh, test. We've got 12 volts. All the time. On both. Bring it up a little bit so I can show you. You have 12 volts. All the time on both of these wires. It takes the distributor to make a momentary ground to break this for the den to send a spark. So if you hold ground here, it's not gonna just spark continuously, it's actually when you pull away. When you pull away, it discharges. So when you make ground and then break it quickly, that's when it sends the spark. So some of the things you can check, you can static check your coil. Now this is on a four stroke, two strokes are a little different, same general principle. So you can check your secondary windings on resistance. Let's see it. And then we'll go out of auto range. Well, it's just auto range, I don't care. And we've got, oh, what's that? 6.6 6 ohms. I believe a good coil is anywhere from 0. 0.6 to like two and a half. And then you'll check your battery positive to your uh, coil output, which is your primary winding. And that's usually in the thousand, so yeah, 13,000 ohms. So this is bench testing as a good coil. Let's bench check this one. You only have one additional component to check. 
So you've got your resistor itself. This is a one ohm resistor. There you go, 1.2 ohm is what we're reading. And then same thing, this, this works the exact same way. You've got your primary winding, 0.8, so this is good. And then you go to your positive side, and here for your secondary winding, 16K, still good. Now you can go online and Google for your specific setup because there is some variances a little bit, but uh, the main point is is that your uh, secondary windings are in the thousands. If it was like five ohms, that would be bad. If it was one mega ohm, that would be bad, but anywhere in the thousands, even like, I don't know, 80,000, I've seen them work. And then when you check your primary winding, it should be single digit. So one ohm, two ohms, nothing more than two and a half, but five ohm, six ohm, seven ohm, they'll probably still work. So you're just looking for single digits versus thousands of ohms. And that would pretty much answer your question whether your coil is any good. Right here, thousands single digit also good and resistor good 1.3 bench check this other one so that bench check is good as well you got just the resistor don't use your finger don't don't ohms check like this because that brings you into the circuit okay 1.9, it's still good. It's a 1 ohm. Um, looks okay on here. It probably still works. It's resisting. So it brings basically your voltage from 12 volt down to like 9 volt on cranking. This is basically an old school way of doing it when they had to resist the cranking voltage distributor. Um, so your pickup. Yeah, I've never changed this, so comment down below if you know how to check these. I'm pretty sure there's a tool you have to buy to check these. Uh, this one's a igniter pickup all-in-one. There's no separate igniter in this one. But uh, put the comments down below what you'd like to see or if you enjoyed this video. I appreciate you joining along, and thanks for tuning in to Fix Dish. See you next time.